Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another episode of my Style Studio series. So I'm really excited about this project because there are a lot of aspects of this dress um, that are new to me. Kind of the bustier style bodice, um, like the gathered cups, all that stuff is super new. Obviously it's not like incredibly hard, but I'm really excited to kind of like figure it all out. Um, the last like huge, like big floor length fancy dress I made was probably like something historical, one of my like 1800s historical dresses. So I'm really excited about making this dress. It's literally like belongs in like a music video or like a princess fairy tale movie and so this is going to be so much fun but here are the curtains i'm going to use for my fabric so these are them um i have two of them i think that each of these curtains probably weighs like i don't know four or five pounds or something um so it is this like golden tannish fake taffeta i do want to note that since filming my original video i've been informed that this fabric is actually silk du peony and not taffeta and also not fake taffeta so i did some research on it and that is indeed correct so just to make sure you guys knew the actual fabric i was using for this project which is what the original dress is kind of made out of it's just a different shade but this is super close so the fact that it's like and the same color family is insane. There's a ton of fabric, which is perfect because the original dress has a very voluminous skirt. It also has incredibly voluminous puff sleeves. So we are going to need a lot of fabric for this project. And I think we're gonna be safe with the amount of fabric that we have for these curtains. So this is partly a recycle and redesign slash a PSI made this, redesigning a designer dress. So without further ado, let's get designing. As with all of my projects, I went ahead and sketched out this dress so I could really visualize the details because when you are drafting a pattern from scratch, you really have to break it apart and basically dissect it in order to put it back together. So I'd sketched out all of the different pattern pieces that I knew I would need and that's what I'm going to show you how kind of I did the process of draping my muslin fabric in order to create the pattern pieces for this project and then make my pattern pieces for my actual fabric. So I wrote out all of the details and if you didn't know this dress was inspired by Tetsuo Matoshi's uh, like green saffron dress and so I really had to analyze it and figure out all the stylized details in order to draft my actual pattern so let's get started on that process all right we are still working on the construction process of this dress and working on draping and making all the pattern pieces so that's what we're gonna dive into real quick um, this is definitely a little bit more of a technical dress the more that I have studied the design and the picture I have realized a lot of different aspects of it that I want to make sure that I integrate and incorporate into my design in my pattern pieces which means really thinking through all of the little details and really making sure that I plan those into my design. So for this dress, I am draping the pattern. Usually I don't drape patterns, usually I create them from my sloper sets and honestly, I really have not done that much draping because it just is not my strongest point of technical skill when it comes to fashion design. But we are working on draping for this dress mainly because I wanted to practice draping techniques and making patterns and so that's how we're going to kind of dive in to designing the bodice of this specific dress. And so when doing draping you always have a pattern form. You kind of mark out your seams and your pattern pieces with tape and obviously this is like not your typical professional pattern um, dress form but it works for what we need to do and it's close enough to my size that it's going to work for us um, and then we just put out all of our tape measurements and so these kind of give me an idea of the different pattern pieces that i am going to want to create we draped all of the pieces we cut them out um, i retraced some of them added seam allowance and then we're going to sew them together do a fitting see if it works and then kind of go from there so these are kind of what my pattern pieces look like now. I have one piece that has the actual um, seam allowance traced onto it and then all the rest of the pieces just look normal. These are the pieces for like the bust cups. 
right here that this design has. And then another aspect that's really unique and integral to this design is that over the bust, um, there are actually these like gathered sections. And when you look at it, I originally thought that it was just sewn and gathered across the top and the bottom. Like there was an overlay that was gathered and then attached to um, the cups of the bodice. But I was, I was looking at it more, I realized that there was actually a channel sewn at the top of the gathering parts that actually has a matching piece of ribbon in it and so the top is almost kind of like a drawstring it's really weird but I'm pretty sure that that's how it actually is it's kind of this overlay that has a ribbon and you kind of just tie it right here and that's how it gets the bow in the design same thing for the shoulders is that in order to get like the huge puffy sleeves and all the gathers that it has um, there's actually a channel also sewn into the straps or the shoulders and then a um, ribbon is put into that and you can kind of tie it and tighten it to your size so I think that's really cool in this design um, but I also have to make sure to integrate that into this um, specifically with the bodice there's also going to be boning in the bodice as well which I'm super excited about um, but there's just all these little technical things so we are going to continue working on the muslin mock-up from the draping. We are probably going to have to make some adaptions as we go along. But once all of those pieces are perfected to the right size and style that I want them to be, I am going to then retrace them probably onto paper so that I can keep the actual pattern and don't have to start from scratch if I ever want to make a dress like this again. And then we are actually going to take all of those pieces, retrace them, and cut them out of the actual fabric for the dress, and then we will actually start constructing constructing it so there are a lot of technical aspects to this but I wanted to give you guys kind of a behind the scene look at what that is because a lot of you are really interested in replicating these pieces for yourself and I love hearing that from you guys and you always have all these great questions so I want to make sure to kind of incorporate those into this video so that you can see all the technical behind the scenes um, that I might not always mention in normal videos and hopefully will help you out if you want to try to make this for yourself Alright, so here's my process for draping fabric in order to make a pattern. So draping is one way that you can draft patterns. You can also use pattern blocks like I have been using in the past. But for this method, I am going to be using draping because of the style of bodice that I am going to be creating. So here I am using a mannequin. This is actually not a professional dress form. Um, it's really just for decoration, but it's close enough to my size that it works. So I'll link it down below if you want to check it out. And then I'm using tape to mark out my actual design and style of my bodice. Now there is specific dressmakers tape that you can use on your mannequins however I'm just using thin washi tape and it works just as well so a lot of people will drape straight onto a mannequin but I prefer to tape out my design first so that I have lines to guide my fabric and those lines are actually going to help me create my different sections they're going to help me draft my pattern pieces um, and all the different kind of shapes that I need and then they also help me to trace them with my sharpie to actually create the different lines in order to visualize my pattern pieces so my first step is to tape out my design. My taping is going to help show me where I need to have darts, where I need to have seams, and all the different shapes that my pattern pieces are going to take. And once the tape is in place, then I will actually grab my muslin fabric, which is just an untreated cotton, and start actually draping it. I'll try to remember to link another video about draping down in the description, but one of the key things you have to keep in mind is that when you are draping your fabric, you have to drape it across the bias. So if you know anything about fabric, you know that you have your warp and your weft. Your warp is your vertical weave and your weft is your horizontal, and the bias is the diagonal um, across that. And so it's important to drape along the bias because it actually gives your fabric more stretch. So as you can see, I pinned my fabric um, right at the corner at the top of my mannequin, and that allowed me to have a lot of fabric to work with and more stretch so once that's pinned into place in order to start draping you all you do is use your guiding lines underneath your fabric and you put your pins into places that create the different pattern pieces that you need and then once all of those are put into place you can take a marker and just start drawing the lines that are going to eventually form your pattern pieces Here's what half of my bodice looks like once it's draped and marked. So this allows me to visualize what the bodice would actually look like with seams and what all my pattern pieces would be. 
So when you're draping, it's up to you if you want to drape the entire bodice or if you just want to drape half of it. Because this bodice is going to be the same on both sides, all I did was drape half of the bodice to create all of my shapes. So once they're all pinned into place and contoured to my mannequin, I have traced where all of my lines are. I am then just going to trim off the excess and then I'm actually going to remove that draping and start cutting out the actual pattern pieces. It's really important that you make sure to draw lines wherever you've placed any pins because once you cut that fabric you need to make sure you know where that seam placement is eventually going to be and then you can add your seam allowance onto your pattern later on. So basically I'm just cutting up all of these pieces and setting them aside to then retrace for my actual mock-up. patterns it's really important to integrate your seam allowance and if you don't know what seam allowance is it's basically the excess fabric that will be taken up in a seam therefore when sewn correctly will actually fit to the size that you are trying to draft and create so I have drafted and draped not really drafted yet but I've draped all of my pieces and so now I'm going in and trying to kind of figure out which sides I'm going to need to make sure and add my seam allowance to and then I'm going to cut out all of those pieces so I've already draped the bodice of my pattern and my my style, so I'm going ahead and going in to drape the back. Now the back is super easy because we have way less pieces to work with, there's only four sections in the back. So again, I went in with my bias of my fabric, pinned it right at the nape of the neck of my mannequin, and then I'm going in to find my lines that I taped underneath my fabric, and that's where I'm inserting all of my pins, and then I'm going to draw all of my lines in Sharpie. You can use any type of marker but I prefer a sharpie because it doesn't wash out and it's also really noticeable so I'm drawing all of my lines where my seams would be where my pin placement is and then I'm going to cut off the excess and start trimming out my patterns Another really important part of draping any type of pattern is that you have to make sure to pull and pin your fabric to the fit that you want it to actually fit in the end of the process. Because if you pin it and drape it super loose, it's not going to fit to the actual size that your mannequin is or that you are. So usually you do draping if you're making a very fitted look, which this bodice is. And here's a whole front side and back side of my draped pattern pieces. So next comes step number two in this draping process where you are essentially going to take all of your pieces that you draped and you are going to retrace them onto the fabric you are using for your mock-up. I'm just using an unbleached muslin here. And you are going to cut out the correct number that you need in order to create your mock-up. So for me, I'm retracing my bust cut pieces. I'm tracing four of each one because they are going to be lined, so I need additional pieces. And I'm also drawing in half an inch of seam allowance for every single pattern piece. So I'm going to repeat these same steps for every single piece from my draping and because of how some of these pieces were draped and how I pinned the fabric, some of them already have seam allowance built into the draping so I need to make sure that I just add seam allowance to the sides that didn't have that. And also keep in mind it's really important to also label your pieces so that you remember which is which and you don't end up sewing random pieces together that aren't meant to be sewn together.
Now for the gathered section that will be the overlay for the bust cups, I didn't drape this, I kind of just eyeballed it and then I knew I could go in and trim it later on. So I basically took my two pieces for my bust cups and essentially just widened them and elongated them and also added seam allowance. Therefore it was basically the same shape that the bust cup would be with the added seam allowance in order to create my channel at the top for my ribbon later on. So here are all of my pattern pieces labeled and ready to be sewn into my mock-up. So I'm not actually going to show you the sewing part because you can watch my other video to see how I actually sewed all of the things, um, but I will show you what it looks like after I've sewn all of the pieces together, which is this. This is my mock-up and this is where I get to actually go in, figure out if all of my pieces sewn together actually work, actually fit how they were supposed to, and the things that don't, this is where I start to tweak it. So for this bodice style, because it's kind of like a bustier in their bust cups, I knew I was going to use foam in those bust pieces, so I was kind of just cutting my foam to make sure that it fit. I ended up actually using a different foam in my other video, but after all of those are sewn together, I'm going to fit it to my mannequin to see if my math and eyeballing skills actually worked. So everything along kind of the fit of the torso works, the only thing I realized is that my bust cups were a little too far down. They didn't quite meet the tape that I originally had in place. So I drew some arrows to kind of adjust that later on. And then here I am starting to gather the overlays to see what I need to trim off and see if this shape worked and what I might need to tweak. So at this point I had actually removed the bust cups from the bodice in order to work on the overlay section and redraft them, so that's why they're not attached to the actual bodice here, and also because I have to attach the gathered overlay before I technically sew it into the bodice, so it was kind of sewing it on, fitting it, taking it off, and kind of going on to the next steps. So I realized that I needed to trim off some of the excess of this overlay, so that's why mock-ups are great, it's because you can tweak it as you go, so you never have to cut unnecessary fabric for your actual fabric of your design. So off camera, I went ahead and stitched the channel at the top of this overlay, which is what I'm going to eventually put a matching ribbon into, but here I'm just using some leftover bias tape to see if the gatherings work and if it covers the entire cup like it's supposed to be. And then I'm going into my other piece and doing the exact same thing, pinning it into place, and then I'm going to sew that down because it looks like it's working. Now that we have sewn our bust cups with the gathered overlays back into place, we are going to do a fitting on the mannequin to see if everything has been fixed um, with all of the tweaks that we made. And it's also really important to make sure that you pin your mock-up or really fit it to your mannequin as how it would actually fit. So it looks like the bust cups are actually working really well. Um, the gathered sections are fitting and the channels work with the ribbon. So I don't think we're gonna have to do any more tweaks here. All right, so I have the sleeves cut out, and because there is going to be a channel for ribbon at the top of the sleeve, I added that to see if it works, and then I also folded this bottom up to do the hem and also make a channel for the elastic. And I think I'm going to have the ribbon come out through the middle, so I might put a buttonhole here, or it might just come out right here, I haven't decided. So now we just need to sew those. So my sleeves are all sewn together now. I also went ahead and added the elastic to the bottom of the sleeve and added ribbon into the channel at the top. And so now I'm kind of figuring out my sleeve placement on my bodice where I want to pin it and sew it and also figure out kind of how the sleeves are going to lay. And once all that is figured out, we are going to sew it together and then I can kind of like tweak it and fit it onto myself. Okay, now that it's all pinned and I'm looking at it, um, I'm realizing that I need to cut the sleeves a lot bigger with way more fabric because there's supposed to be a whole lot more gathering here and therefore more volume in the sleeves. Um, and there's also no armhole, so it's kind of just pinned right underneath and then attached to the front and then obviously gathered with the ribbons. So we are going to sew this on and then fit it. And if it's good to go, we might be ready to actually cut it from our fabric. 
Okay, so I just went and fit this on myself and now I kind of have a better idea of some of the things I need to tweak. So basically what I want to do is bring the cups up to meet this little peak so that the bodice is almost a little bit more straight across rather than so sweetheart. All of the seams um, placements are fine in the original dress or the actual dress. These are going to have boning in them. And then I obviously need to add more fabric to the sleeves. But other than that, everything fits pretty well. So now I just have to completely deconstruct this, which means I have to go in and rip out all of the seams. Now, a tip for when you're making um, muslin mock-ups is to always use a basting stitch so it's way easier to rip out. So that's what I'm going to go do is rip out all my seams so that all I have left is pieces of fabric um, in the shapes I need that I'm going to retrace them to make the pattern and then we are going to cut it out of the actual fabric. So the last official step in your draping drafting process is to take all of your pattern pieces and actually trace them out to draft your official paper pattern. Obviously you could use the fabric pieces but if you want to create this design later on in the future it's great to retrace it and have a pattern that you can actually go back to on paper. So in order to get to this step, you do have to take apart your actual muslin mock-up and take those pattern pieces with the fabric in order to retrace them. So after I had deconstructed my entire muslin mock-up, basically really half of it, I took all of my pieces and I started retracing them. And since I had already added my seam allowance to my actual fabric, all I had to do was trace around the outside. So I like to trace around my mock-ups with pencil and then I go back in later on with a regular Sharpie or a thin Sharpie to really to find the lines and I also label every single piece so I know which pieces they are and I will also go in and add different pattern markings like cut on a fold, my grain lines, and also the little arrows on the sides for my notching to help me remember which pieces are supposed to be sewn and matched up together. Now I know some of you are probably wondering what kind of tools you need in order to draft and kind of create your own patterns and the answer is that you really don't need fancy tools. As long as you have paper, fabric, pencil, and a regular ruler, you honestly can create any type of pattern. But I will link all of my favorite tools below. Um, there are tools that actually help the process like curved rulers and different things like that. As you can see here, I'm using a curved ruler and that really helps with all of kind of my curves of different types of pattern pieces. So check down below um, for a link of all of my favorite tools, but you don't really have to have anything fancy like here I'm just using like white um, butcher paper basically there is a specialty um, pattern drafting paper but I don't use it I just use a regular paper or wrapping paper from the dollar store So fun fact for those of you who watch any of the design shows like Project Runway, Making the Cut, or Next in Fashion, usually draping is the method that all of those designers use to create their styles because they're usually not allowed to bring slopers or block patterns with them onto the show. So they usually create every single one of their designs using the exact same method that you've seen in today's video, except usually they cut out the mock-up version because it saves them time to just straight create it with their actual fabric. So they have to make sure that they're extra precise when they're cutting things because once you cut it and you don't have any more fabric then that's not good. So now that I have traced out all of my pattern pieces, I'm just going in with the Sharpie to really define all of the lines and make my pieces a little bit more stand out and also look a little bit more professional. So usually this is one of the steps that I require all of my students in class to do whenever they are drafting patterns. So this is what all of my bodice pattern pieces look like once they are traced out. Right now they're kind of looking like the patterns you buy at the store and have to cut out of your tissue paper because that's essentially what we did, but we just did it manually by hand and by draping and drafting and tracing. So I have all of my pattern pieces traced and cut out. So I retraced all of my muslin pieces onto paper so I would actually have a paper pattern to save and have for other projects. 
but these are the pattern pieces I'm going to be using to actually cut the pattern pieces of fabric out of the curtains. And then I didn't want to redraft a whole skirt because the skirt for this dress is huge and takes up a lot of fabric and it's just like a giant circle skirt with four different panels and I knew that I already had a pattern lying around so that's another tip is in order to sometimes create different designs um, you can actually combine two different patterns that you have or you could draft part of it and then use a pattern piece from something that already exists so you don't have to completely do it from scratch. So this is the skirt pattern. Um, this specific circle skirt is for um, a, like a formal dress. So it's a Leanne Marshall Simplicity pattern and it has the perfect skirt. And so I just have to go in and trim all the excess paper off. And actually, because this skirt is so big, I have to connect two different pieces of the pattern together. But then this is what we will be using for the curtains. And the one thing about this skirt is that it takes up a lot of fabric. But these curtains are pretty huge. Um, like they were probably for some really, really big windows in like a dining room or living room. So I think we should have enough fabric for the multiple different panels of the skirt. If anything, I will probably just take in um, the width of this skirt and kind of slim it down to be able to actually have the four different panels um, for the skirt. So yeah, that's kind of a little bit of the technical aspects of this dress, the behind the scenes of how I'm drafting the pattern. So here's a recap of everything we've done in order to drape a bodice pattern. Um, so basically for this one, I draped it on my dress form, which helped me to come up with all of my different sections of my pattern pieces. Then I took those drapings and I retraced them onto muslin so that they were a little bit more um, specific and I also added seam allowance. Then I sewed together my muslin and I fit it to my mannequin and I fit it also to myself. And then once everything was kind of fitting as I thought that it should, nothing needed to get tweaked or if I did need to tweak it, I tweaked it and then fit it to make sure it was perfect. Then you deconstruct the whole muslin, you retrace all of those pieces onto paper to actually create the pattern, make sure you have seam allowance, you title all your pattern pieces, you add your pattern markings, and then you're ready to actually cut it out of the fabric. So that is a whole process. Um, if any of you have ever watched Project Runway, that is the process for how they create a majority of their patterns in Project Runway is that they actually just drape it and then they trace those drapings on to paper. So it's a whole process. It's, it is very time consuming. But once you have the pieces traced, you have a pattern that you can come back to and use in the future. But when you're coming at a um, project from scratch and you don't have a pattern for it, you kind of have to start at the very beginning. So. That's the tedious long process for creating this pattern. Um, if you want to try it for yourself or just kind of see how I did it. And now we actually get to do the fun part, which is actually cut it out of the real fabric and sew it together. But first, um, I have to go in and take the curtains apart because the curtains are three different layers. Um, it's hemmed. They're like these pleats up at the top. So I need to take it apart. So all I have left is fabric to use. So. That's the next tedious step in this process. So that is a wrap on the behind the scenes video of how I draped and drafted the pattern for my fairy tale dress. If you have not checked out the fairy tale dress video, feel free to click the link in the bio and see how this dress turned out. But as always, thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed seeing a behind the scenes of my creative process and how you can drape and draft a pattern for yourself. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you were inspired and subscribe to my channel so you stay updated on new videos in the future.